Okay, so goal for today is to finish this off and hopefully we go. Hello. So the example five, I think we call five, this example five. Okay. So find the region is bounded by y equals x squared plus two, one x equals one half x plus one and zero and one is rotated around the okay so what I would do what I would do before I even start is just draw the draw all the curves and then worry about where you're rotating last so you got a parabola opening up moved up to Um, got that one in there. Y equals half x plus one. A line moved up one with a y slope a half. So up one over two. Something like this. Hopefully I'm not embarrassing myself. And then x equals zero and x equals 1. So we're talking about this little gray area in here. Where it's bounded by all four. The region bounded by the blah. Okay, so we found the region bounded by blah. Okay. The next step, draw the line y equals 3 on your page. Well, y equals 3 is here-ish. Yeah? Sure? Yeah? So what we need to talk about, and this is what I was trying to yell at you about you yesterday when I was running around Ryan making a fool of myself and maybe a little bit of Ryan. Sorry, Ryan. But we need to talk about two distances. We need to talk about the inner radius and we need to talk about the outer radius. So, so we have to visualize that gray box or that gray shape being rotated around the y equals 3, the line y equals 3. So we need to talk about the outer radius. Is that the parabola? Or is that the blue line? So how do we talk about the distance? There you go, 3 minus the blue line. So big R is going to be 3 minus the blue line. We'll even use blue to represent that. What's little r? Or the distance to the to the black parabola. So to find the volume, we're going to integrate from where to where? From 0 to 1. What are we going to put in front of that? A pi. What are we going to put now? Big R squared minus little r squared. Oops. Um, I'm too lazy to actually do this by hand. Well, no, I'm not because I had to do it in university. Um, but I'm going to show you how you can use your calculator to do this just to make sure I'm not a fool and I have a videotape of me doing this properly. That's all we did yesterday. Yeah, I don't know what happened. I, I kind of got... Well, I was going to... Okay. Oh, okay. And I went online last night and I got a whole pile of YouTube videos that I, you can go watch if you don't can't visualize it. 
and I'll put them up. Actually, I started putting them up. I'm like, something weird happened. I don't get what just happened, but anyway. You have to kind of visualize, for y equals 3, you just visualize working on a lathe. That piece of wood spinning around on a lathe, and then for the y equals 1, or the x equals lines, just think about working on a clay potter's wheel. That's really all you're doing. Oh, I got excited. So you got that, you got that one, you got minus that one squared. So we're going to go second trace seven because I don't even care what it looks like. Because you got to remember, this isn't the surface we're graphing here. This is. We're actually graphing the dis difference in the radiuses. We're not actually graphing the surface. So don't, don't, moon doesn't look the same. Doesn't, it's not going to. All we want out of this is its number. So 2.55 times pi. Yeah, it'd be a lot of. I don't know if it'd be a lot of work to do by hand, but it certainly wouldn't be fun. Okay, six. The region blah 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 blah, blah is rotated around the line blah blah blah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Easy. Yeah, we did. Because we're just getting it to do the integral. We're just using the calculator to do the integral for us. We're not actually getting it to draw the graph. We're just getting it to do the calculation. Um, you could actually type the symbol from alpha. You can type pi times, and then you type integral, and then you type from 0 equals x equals 0 to x equals 1. Like, there's a way of typing it, and it'll do it for you as well. It'll just spit out the answer to you. So. Um, the region blah is rotated about, okay, so draw this. The region bounded by, except for, well, I don't know, x e so y equals x squared, looks like that, x equals zero, looks like that, x equals two, looks like that. See, I think there's a problem, and I, and I want to ask a friend of mine who made these notes that I stole them from, but I think she's missing the line y equals zero, so we're going to put it there as well. So here's the gray area that we're talking about. And we're going to rotate it around the line. X equals negative 3. Here we are. So we need to figure out what big R is and what little r is. Yeah, it's this distance. Five, right? Now, now I don't care how you get five, but it's five. Little r. No. Zero. No, no. No, it's this dis. It's x squared. x squared minus negative three. Okay. So we're going to integrate. Oh, but Mr. App. <laughs> Anybody knows the problem? Okay, when we integrate, we're not going to integrate in terms of x because we're going up the surface. We're going, like, we're taking, we're taking the shape and spinning it around the line x equals negative 3. But we're talking about y coordinates here, folks. So we need to put pi here and we need to integrate. And we're going to integrate from 0 to 4. 
Y4. Yeah, it's the intersection point, 2, 4. We're going to integrate from 0 to 4 of big R squared minus little r squared. dy. And then you say to yourself, but Mr. App, there's no y there. And then I get the highlighter out, and I highlight this, and I highlight this, and I highlight this. But Mr. App, I know what x squared is. It's, yeah. Yeah, it'll work out nice. It'll always work out nice, dear. Always. No. Well, no, because you're going to be using it. No, it'll just be a strictly take the part out that you need and call what you need Y. What? Yeah, sorry. I'm just so excited about that part there. So then you go, okay, I'll do that by hand. That's actually not that bad to do by hand. You could square the y plus 3 and clean it all up and then do the antiderivative and then subtract. Yeah? Or you just cheat. Recognize that you can't type y's in your calculators, right? So you're going to have to remember that we're doing this in terms of y even though I'm typing x's in here. Well, yeah, the farther you go in math, the less you use a calculator and the more you use a computer. You don't use calculators after about first or second year, like, eh, hey, whatever. You still use them in courses, but I mean, all the friends that I know that do mathematics, that do mathematics, they use computers. They do. Nobody does math with a calculator unless it's something silly easy. Now, you, they, what they think is silly easy is a lot different than what you guys think silly easy and what I think silly easy is, but whatever. So you ignore that the shape doesn't match. You put zero here, you put four here. Nope. Take your answer and times it by pi. Why is it negative? Yeah, but it should be negative, unless it types up memory. Anyways, you times it by pi. What did I do wrong? No. Yeah, but x squared is? Is y. I have a volume of solid. Well, that's silly. Isn't it, kind of like orbiting that, that line? it is. It is orbiting that line. It, but it's not negative. You can't have negative volume. How much does this car take up in the tank when I dump it in? Negative 23 me cubic meter. No. Let me think about why it's negative. That's bugging me. Anyways, whatever. I'm not going to worry about it right now. No. Volume is space. Okay, same thing, except we're going to rotate it around the line x equals 3. So we draw the shape. Here's the line x equals 3. What's big R now? Three minus. What's little r now? Oh, 3 minus 2, right? Big r, little r. So you're going to integrate pi 0 to 4 big r squared minus little r squared 
Dy-Wall. Okay, what's going to go in the brackets? 3 minus y. 3 minus x squared, but x squared is y. Okay. What about this one? So let's just put the three calculations here, right? I don't know where the 22, 23, 24, 25 is coming from, but that's exciting. So I don't know. A for 20, I guess 22. How do you find that volume? Find the volume if you rotate it around the x-axis. So we're talking about this line right here. So pi times the integral from where to where? Zero to yes, you do. You, what value of x makes y three in the square root graph? Nine. The integral from zero to nine of I don't know. Which is higher? Which is, okay, what's, okay, all you gotta do is think now here is what's big R, what's little r? What's big R? Nine. Or three, sorry. I'm, I'm an idiot. Nine, three, not three, nine. Nine, three. Three squared. Minus what's little r squared? Root squared x. Yeah. So that one's done. Okay, the y axis. Let's we'll put it here. Shh, underneath. Pi integral. What? Now we're going around this line. What's big r? What's where are we starting? No, nah, but what's our limits on our integration? We're starting at going and starting in going to. Starting at zero and going to three. Okay, what's big R? Nine minus zero, yeah. Minus what squared? What's little r? Oh, it's, D, it's dy here, not it. It's not y. y squared. Because you have to take the equation and make it x equals. Yeah, the big one is a straight, the big one is, where are we talking about? Uh, which axis? What? It's, which is the farther distance? It's this one. Why do we have nine there? Neither do I. What's the bigger radius? 
the, the y squared. What's the smaller radius? There isn't any. Zero. Yeah. I'm like, what? That doesn't make any sense. Okay, so we got that one done. We got that one done. The line y equals 3. So we'll put the line y equals 3 up here. And we'll come over here, I guess. Pi integral. What? Oh, yeah, you're right. Good call. Well done. We're still integrating from 0 to 3. What's big R? X, yeah. But it's not x squared, it's... Well, how far, you gotta talk about, you gotta talk about this distance. You gotta be careful, it's three minus, three minus the root of x squared. Okay, what's little r? Three minus three. There is no little r, right? It's, it, it's right on the line. Yes, that one's done. Okay, the pink line, the line x equals 9, pi integral, why is it 0 to 3, that was 0 to 9, this one's 0 to 3, this x is Mr. App, this one's y's now, okay, so the line x equals 9, oh, what's big R? Nine minus zero squared. What's little r? Nine minus yeah, y squared. Good. Because it's this whole distance. How far? This is at nine. That's at zero. You could just say nine. You don't need nine minus zero. You could just say that distance is nine. Did that happen too fast, or I'm getting, no, 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 yeah, sorry. Yeah, or, uh, we good? You sure? Well, when you're rotating, okay, so you have to decide. Are you, you're talking about the boundaries and the limits of the integration. You have to decide when you rotate around the line x equals 9, you're talking about a vertical line. Vertical line, y values. If you're rotating around a vertical line, you're talking about y values changing. If you rotate around a horizontal line, your x's are changing. It depends on, you know, vertical, y's. Horizontal axis. If you go around the y axis, yeah, but if you go around the y axis, your axis, no, you were looking at things this way. Yeah, but the x. It's how we call what axis is what. When we rotate, just a sec, when we rotate around this line, so if I have a shape that does this, I don't know, two zero, and the coordinates of that point is five six, and I call this distance big R, and I call this distance little r I'm going to I'm going to do the integral this way If I go this way I 
can't draw, whatever, who cares. And I rotate it around this line. I'm going to call this distance big R, this distance little r. I'm going to do this. Want a really cheesy example of this? Anybody woodworking in this room? Anybody spin anything on a lathe lately in this room? Do you know what a lathe is? Okay, so a, you take usually a spinning piece of wood and it spins this way really fast. Okay? It's spinning around a horizontal axis really fast. Where does, okay, when you apply that knife into that piece of wood that's spinning really fast, which way do you move it? This way. Exactly the same thing. Right? So if you take if you're working on a potter's wheel, you got a lump of clay right in the middle of your potter's wheel, you're spinning it around a vertical axis. When you put your fingers into that lump of clay and pull it up on the side. Which way are you integrating it? You're integrating it up, even though that the sides are coming. You know what I mean? Like, vi like those visuals should help. So if you're work if you're spinning it over a horizontal axis, you're working on a lathe. You're working left to right. Yeah, just x zero and five because they're the x coordinates, and this. I spun around the y axis, you know, okay, I spun around, I don't care x axis, y axis. I spun around a vertical axis. I spun it around a vertical axis and I integrated with respect to the y's now. Because it's just like dumping your fingers in the middle of the, of the hunk of clay on the potter's wheel and pulling your fingers up the side. Right? Vertical axis, you're changing your y's. Good luck trying to change your axis. You'll have a mistake. Clay will be flying everywhere. Same thing here. <laughs> Try and do that on a spinning lathe, a piece of wood that's spinning at 400 RPM, and you try and, I don't know, <laughs> that, that gouge will be flying back at you pretty fast. It's gonna hurt, okay? I don't recommend it. You get, you get the visuals now maybe? That, that might help you when you're doing this. Okay, um, so I'm stopping here. In class, you have a Chapter 5 assignment that I would like from you on Tuesday. Tuesday. Um, we have Day 5 to do next week. We have Day 5 to do and Day 0 to do. We haven't done the first page from Chapter 7 yet. So we have two things to do and then we're done the course. Free at last. Well, no, no, no. No more new stuff. Actually, I have to go back and do something from chapter 4, but that's...